Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Prison Architect. Now I have to say before we get started here, this is a very, very early Let's Look at. This is a game that has just entered playable alpha, but it's got kind of an interesting indie pedigree behind it because this is from uh, Introversion Software, who are the guys who made uh, Darwinia, Multiwinia, Uplink, so a lot of big indie games from a couple or a few years ago. And now they're coming back with this kind of like Minecraft style of funding or at least selling uh, their new game, Prison Architect. So this is a, a playable alpha that if you buy the alpha, I believe you get access to the full version of the game. Anyway, we'll get into the pricing model uh, as we continue. But again, you might see some bugs, you might see some work in progress type stuff. It's very, very early on. Uh, but this game is a very interesting and unusual game that is a heck of a lot of fun. Basically, it's a prison building game, the way you might consider SimCity to be like a city building game. Uh, we're gonna build a prison, we're gonna designate certain areas of that prison to be cells, showers, kitchens, yards, you know, phone rooms, offices for our staff, and stuff like that. Uh, and we're just generally gonna try to keep the prison in good working order and keep, you know, the prisoners happy. But the prisoners, of course, are, you know, angry SOBs who are always dirty and smelly and punching their toilets until it floods the entire cell block. Anyway. We'll show that off as we get started here. So the first thing we're going to do is create new prison. And we're going to go with a small prison. And then you'll be able to see how the gameplay works. So we start with this map right here. And we have only two things right now. A deliveries area and a garbage area. We have $9,950. And we have an operating budget of $1,500 per day. So this truck is coming in with our workman here. These are going to be the guys who are going to build our prison. Now if we pause the game here. As you can see we can speed up, pause, or play at normal time. Uh, we can look at our to-do list. So first things first, we can read the CEO's letter. I'm not going to actually read this, but this is just basically this guy's way of telling us, like, what you should do uh, to get started. So we're going to start with a single large holding cell. We're going to hire a warden. Uh, and we are going to get a kitchen and canteen up as soon as possible because one of our main objectives is going to be uh, feeding all of these prisoners that we're going to get. And our other to-do list entry is the more important one, I would say, prisoner intake. So in 24 hours, roughly, eight prisoners will be arriving. So within the next 24 hours, and this actually works... I don't know, I think it's like one minute equals one second at normal time. So we have a, a decent amount of time here. Uh, we have to have a functioning prison. It doesn't have to be huge, but it has to be functioning at the very least. So what we're going to do is show off like the early elements of prison building, and then I'll show you some prisons that I've actually built so we can show off a little bit of the mid to later game gameplay anyway. But anyway, we're just going to uh, on pause time here, and we are going to start building a foundation. And we're going to build a reasonably large prison here. So this foundation is going to cost us... Uh, around 10,000, I want to make it a little smaller, maybe like that, $9,520. You might be like, wow, that's almost all of your budget. You are indeed correct, but if we pause time again, I can go down to reports here and grants. And by taking a contract, I can get uh, some extra money that I will use to build our functional prison, which is pretty much essential right now. Uh, this prison that I built right here might actually be too big, but that's okay for now, because this is just showing off how it works. So we're going to take this contract for $40,000 for uh, basic detention center. This will allow us to build... We'll get a to-do list here. Build a holding cell, shower, yard, kitchen, canteen, hire at least two guards, and hire at least two chefs. Okay, so we're going to exit out of this. We're going to set this to go a little bit faster, and our workers here are going to get started building our foundation. It's going to take them a little while. This is a game that is, you know, to put it politely, a little bit slow moving. It's definitely a game that is more for, at least in the early aspects here, uh, more for the patient amongst us. Now, in terms of games that this game actually plays like, I've heard a lot of people say that this is very, very reminiscent of a game like Dwarf Fortress, but as someone who has actually never played Dwarf Fortress, I know that might be shocking to some of you, uh, but I always thought it looked kind of like, what's a good way to put it, inaccessible to, to someone with my intellectual capabilities, shall we say, or my gameplay capabilities anyway. Um, but yeah, I always thought Dwarf Fortress looked kind of like opaque from the outside looking in, but uh, I've heard that there's a lot of Dwarf fortressy type elements in here, but I'm going to rely on you guys to let me know whether or not is that, that is true. So we've got our time ticking down here pretty quickly, but building the foundation here is going to take the, the majority of our early time, and the rest is going to be focused on just building up some buildings to make this uh, a, a functional prison. Now this is a much larger prison than normally you would probably require to build, but we'll see as soon as this gets started. One thing I should do is put a door on it, so we're going to go to objects, jail door, and just put one like right here. Uh, because our building does not actually become a building until it has a functional door, which makes sense. So, in terms of stuff that we can build, we have foundations here, which allows us to actually build, like, the building, like, the subfloor and the steel framing and stuff like that. We have materials, like, flooring and walls, uh, which we're going to use to kind of, like, set up specific 
I guess, uh, discrete areas of our prison. Like, each room will be surrounded in concrete or brick walls. Uh, we have rooms, which allows us to designate, like, okay, this area is going to be a cell, this area is going to be a shower, which is very important for organization. Then we have objects, so we have things like beds, toilets, electric chairs, you know, it, it, this is a dark game at times. Um, and these allow us to basically make rooms that actually have function. So, for example, a cell is not really a cell unless it has a bed and a toilet, otherwise it won't function. Uh, similarly, a uh, kitchen isn't a kitchen unless it has a cooker and a fridge, which is somewhere in here there. Cooker and fridge in it. Uh, otherwise, uh, it just doesn't function properly. So there are objects that we're gonna need to fill these rooms with in order to keep prisoners happy and really just make the rooms actually work. Alright, so our, uh, foundation is built here. Our building is up, so we'll pause time quickly. And we also spend a lot of money on lights. We'll talk about the electricity element of, of things soon, because that is something that we have to plan for. But first, let us just uh, build a very simple prison here. So what we want to do is uh, fulfill all of these items on our to-do list. So build a holding cell, shower, yard, canteen, kitchen, hire two guards, and hire two chefs. So first things first, let us build a holding cell. You can see the requirements here. So it's got to be indoors, it's got to be at least 5x5, five five. Uh, it's got to have a toilet, and it's got to have a bench. You know what? We're going to make it much larger than 5x5. Five five. We're going to make it like 5x12, which is actually a horribly inefficient use of space. Uh, but is going to allow us to accomplish our goal here anyway. And the reason I, I've left like one row here and a column here is so that we are going to uh, fill these up with concrete walls. So you don't want to put rooms necessarily right next to each other. You want to plan to keep them apart by a little bit. Uh, we'll build a shower as well. And again, just for symmetry's sake, I guess we'll keep everything in the 5x12 range here. Uh, we can't build a yard inside. That has to be outdoors, I believe. We'll take our kitchen, which is here. This is just for organization's sake for now, so we know what we're building. Uh, we'll build a canteen as well. And again, this will just be 5 by 12. And then we should build an office, which is this. Uh, I think this has to be at least 4 by 4, but, you know, 5 by 12 is bigger than 4 by 4. Uh, and we will... Eh, we should actually make this just a little bit bigger, just to, to make sure that we have something that looks like it makes sense. We can actually turn this into two offices, probably, just by putting a concrete wall in the middle, which is cool. Uh, and then we're gonna just fill all this stuff up with concrete walls and let our workmen uh, go to town on this. And once this is all filled in, I'll talk about what we have to do next in order to make sure these rooms actually work. So first off, there we go, we'll just make the set time to go faster. We could hire some more workmen, actually, uh, in order to get this done a little bit faster, but we don't necessarily need to do that right now. What I should point out is that these trucks keep coming in with deliveries, and these deliveries change based on what you need. So as you can see right now, we've got tons of lights, uh, because the game automatically puts lights, you know, like once every four squares in each direction, which is cool. So as these guys are building, we are just occasionally going to drop some doors in the canteen, we'll drop a door in the kitchen. Uh, you can only drop doors on, like, concrete walls, so we have to wait until the walls are built until we can actually drop a door in every possible location. We'll drop a large door on the holding cell. And let us drop a door in the shower as well. Okay, so al almost all the concrete walls are built here. These guys are going to build themselves into corners sometimes, but the other workmen uh, will put down the doors that are going to make it possible for them to get out. So we'll put another door in this office, and in fact, we should probably build another concrete wall in this office uh, so that we can have two offices. Is that still going to be bigger than 4x4? Four four? Yes, it will. Uh, so like so, and then maybe another door like this. But we can't put that in just yet. But anyway, I'm not the greatest prison architect of all time. I have spent like three or four hours with this game already since I got it a little bit earlier last week. But, uh, you know, there's still definitely a learning curve for building stuff like this. So again, we still have about 16 hours until the prisoners arrive. We're building this up quite nicely. Uh, let us slow down time just a little bit here. Or I guess turn time back into normal. Uh, and we are going to put up another door here, and we're just going to go to rooms. And you don't really need to worry, concern yourself with what I'm doing right here. But we're going to take out this office area and instead turn it into two offices so that we can uh you know hire two staff and put them in here anyway uh now that we'll pause time you can see that we have all these rooms inside which is good but we still have not actually completed them and the reason for this is that every room needs some items before it actually counts as a room so for example offices require an office desk a chair and a filing cabinet so let us get uh the office desk which is right here and we'll put one like that. Actually, we have to play so we can see the, the layout here. That's fine. So one like that, one like that. Put some chairs in here. And of course, all this stuff is costing us uh, money as well as time. And we also need a filing cabinet. Maybe one here, one here. So these will now become two fully functioning offices that we can put a warden in and an accountant in, perhaps. Uh, now, canteen requires a serving table. You just know this stuff after you build enough prisons, I guess. The kitchen requires a cooker. 
and a fridge. Where's our fridge? I forget that every single time, apparently, so we'll set it up like this, just so there's a ton of space. Showers require shower heads, and it's also a good idea to put a bunch of drains in, otherwise you're gonna flood your prison, and that makes the prisoners angry, as does, you know, basically everything else you come across in this game. Uh, so we're, we're, we're doing well right here, just to set up our prison in an optimal setup before uh, the prisoners actually arrive in 15 hours. So time is going by pretty quickly here, as you can see, and our holding cell requires a toilet, and then a bench, but I'm gonna make things a little bit easier on them here. I'm gonna put two benches, uh, and I'm also going to put a large TV so that hopefully they will be uh, less likely to riot because they'll be watching My Three Sons or something. Now, of course, there is no power. We're gonna be able to build a yard quite easily, by the way. I realize that I'm missing out on that right now, but don't worry about it. Um, we have no power, so what we're gonna do quickly is uh, set up a concrete wall like so. Uh, and then we're going to create like a utilities room for ourselves. So we'll, we'll make it reasonably big for now, just because it doesn't really matter. Uh, so we'll speed up time to get this room built. And we'll use this as our utilities room right here. So we're going to supply power and water throughout the, uh, the whole prison in this room right here. As you can see, all these things that require electricity are beeping at me with uh, this like lightning bolt. And the ones that require water have the, the water drop. Water management has been kind of a sore spot for me so far. Uh, I find it a little bit buggy or work in progress -y is a nice way to put it. What we should do, actually, uh, if we pause time here, or just slow it down a little bit, is hire some staff. So let's hire uh, a warden and put him in here. And what the warden does is it's going to allow us to unlock bureaucracy, which is kind of like a tech tree, actually. Uh, so we can go here and say, oh, what do we want to research next? We can research legal, which unlocks the lawyer, health, which unlocks the doctor to heal injured prisoners, obviously. Security, which unlocks the chief of security to maybe keep people more in line. Or finance, which unlocks, unlocks the accountant, which is what we're going to do because it gives us access to the government grant programs, which allows us to uh, get funding. So this is going to take 12 hours for this to research. But that's why Warden is so important. He's almost like a commander in like an RTS style or something like that. So we're going to throw up uh, a door like right here, and then we're going to throw down uh, a power station. Maybe like so, with some capacitors around it to give it some extra power. And we're going to throw down a water pump station as well. And we might as well string some electrical cables up right now. So the electrical cables kind of work in like an area of effect. You don't have to wire everything up directly, you just kind of have to spread them out enough throughout the, the area that everything kind of gets... Bathed in ambient electricity is maybe the, the best way for me to put it right now. So we're just going to stretch out some cables like this. You can see our 40000 from that grant is not going a whole hell of a long way. Money management seems to be uh, definitely a major element of this. And we're also going to send water through some pipes. So let us send some large pipes here uh, and then through here as well. Obviously these go underground so we don't have to worry about them being exposed or anything like that. But anyway, to stretch the pipes over like this. Small pipes don't carry... Uh, water as far, but they are the only pipes that can actually go over uh, walls like this. Large pipes, as you can see, you cannot place on walls. I'm not sure if that's intentional or again, uh, more of like a work in progress style thing, but who knows. Anyway, we're coming up to dusk here. Uh, the power station is up, I believe, and should be functioning now, so we should light our prison and we'll see if we have enough power to meet the demand. It does indeed appear so, so we should probably speed up time again a little more here. Because we have a lot of building to do. We don't really have a whole hell of a lot to do in this like right side here. Uh, but we'll, we can put something over in there. We can put a cell block or something in there a little bit later. And our prisoners will be arriving in uh, about 11 hours here. Which is not going to be too, too long. Let us uh, make our yard, shall we? So we're just going to set up a uh, jail door here. And then we're going to give them a nice little area outside to play in. So let's go rooms. Uh, yard, minimum size 5x5. Five five, so we'll set it up as a 9 by 8 and we'll surround it in a fence here which I believe is in materials and let's give them some stuff to do while they're outside so we do have wiring running through here and it looks like our power station is doing just fine for power so we're gonna be okay and everything is powered up we're just gonna install those pipes now uh, now for our yard what should we put out there probably a couple lights because uh, it's pretty damn dark right now we should probably string some electrical cable out there as well so that they can actually get some power uh, and beyond that, something to occupy themselves. So we'll put a couple of weight benches out there. You know how these guys are, like to work out. We'll put, uh, maybe... Where's the, there's the phone booth. So we'll put some phone booths out here. So that they can call their lawyers or whatnot. I don't know, maybe they're innocent. I'm not trying to make them sound like a bad guy here. 
or bad guys, I guess we could say. And that just should be enough to keep them occupied, at least for a while. Anyway, we still got time going quite quickly here. As you can see, we built a holding cell, we built a shower, we built a kitchen, we built a canteen. We we're building the yard as we speak. Uh, so what do we have left to do? We have to hire two guards and hire two chefs. So let's do that. We'll uh, go to staff here, uh, hire two guards. We'll just put them down right here and hire two chefs as well. And we'll just put those in the kitchen. And we're still under our operating budget. Now, in order to finish this contract, all we need to do is finish our yard construction. So we're just going to wait for that to be done. Uh, do we, still have, we still have pipes to be installed here, which I'm hoping is going to happen. Sometimes the, they get distracted and they stop installing the pipes. They might just be waiting on deliveries. But anyway, uh, we'll again continue going with our sped up time here. And hopefully, you can see not everything is blinking at us anymore, which is good. We might need to install some wiring, actually, to directly wire up the stove. Maybe you do have to directly wire up appliances. Again, still very much learning here. Uh, as I play, I assure you. But our yard is almost done. I think we just need the fence to be completed and it should be up. Secure, behind at least one door. Well, I have the door installed. So the yard should be complete as soon as this fence is done. I guess it doesn't count as behind a door if there's still a bunch of open space, but that should do it. As soon as these guys leave, maybe it will say that we're behind a door. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that contract is complete. So we have completed the, the basic objectives there, and we still have five hours until prisoners show up, which is actually not very much time. And these prisoners are going to get ornery very quickly, I assure you. So we have some guys just doing nothing right now, I think. Because they can't actually install those, those electrical wires in there because there's no door, because I don't know what I want to put in here yet. But we'll just keep a door here for now, so that these guys can actually install these electrical cables, and these ones down here as well, uh, and bring power to this next section. But again, we'll just speed up time, because we've basically done everything that we need to do in order to at least sustain our prison for these first prisoners. So we will wait until the prisoners are, arrive uh, and we'll see how they like their new digs and then once they start getting inevitably angry and having riots and stuff like that uh, I'll load into my two existing prisons that will show off you know kind of two wildly diverted divergent ways uh, that this game can go. Either the prisoners can be only about you know 50% angry or 100% angry all the time. There's a lot of, like, emergent gameplay going on in Prison Architect. Like, the, the way that the prisoners interact with each other is really uh, interesting a lot of the time. Like, sometimes, like, I just had one situation where I had a prisoner come in and all the cells were full. So he just walked into another prisoner's cell. I don't know how he got through the door and, like, took a shit in that prisoner's toilet. And then that prisoner got so angry that this dude was, like, affronting his territory or something that he just punched his toilet until the toilet actually shattered and it flooded like the entire cell block and then started a riot and I was pretty pissed off about that. There are, there's like a scoring system so you get penalty points like if a prisoner escapes uh, you get penalty points if a prisoner gets killed or injured but by and large that stuff doesn't seem super important uh, in the early game which is where I am right now. I've never really had a prison last longer than a couple of days. Um, we can pick up another grant right now if we wanted to like for example uh, I could build a cell block here, but that's gonna take too much time for one video But you know if I end up doing a series, I'll definitely do that um, I could get a grant for health and well-being to get like a doctor and stuff like that Or I can just get a grant for an administration sector So let's click on that and you can see our objectives build two offices done hire a warden unlock finance through bureaucracy Which is almost done and then hire an accountant. So that's gonna be an extra uh, 10,000 that is very easy for us to uh, satisfy the conditions for here so we are basically just waiting on these prisoners to get here. And they will be here quite soon. Now this is a prison that is definitely set up for only like temporary use. By the way, why are these guys not working? Maybe I should cancel, um, cancel these jobs right here. And then fill it in again. Sometimes they, they get distracted, I guess. Again, oh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, this is uh, definitely still an alpha, still a work in progress. I have no idea when this game is actually coming out. But... Uh, there, there's still a lot of work to be done, for sure. Anyway, the prisoners are going to be here in about 25 seconds. Our guards uh, should escort them to the holding cell. The reason this is not a permanent prison is because it's, there's just a holding cell. Like, there's no place for these guys to actually sleep. So this is deliberately designed as just a temporary prison. We would definitely want to, um, like, build a cell block, which you'll see in my existing prisons, if we wanted to keep them happy over the long term. Because these prisoners staying in this one room are not going to be too happy you know, after a couple of days when they can't sleep. So the prisoners have arrived, they're getting pulled in now. Uh, and this is where things actually start to get, like, managey. Like, you're not actually directing the guards, really. You're not actually directing the prisoners. 
You're just trying to build a situation or conditions where their happiness is accounted for. So you can see this guy's going to shower. It must be a minimum security prison that these guys can, you know, just walk around uh, of their own volition. And you can see sometimes when we zoom in uh, why these guys are pissed off, if they are pissed off. So this guy needs to wee, but unfortunately James Scales is pooing on the toilet right here. Um, but maybe Ellison can go now. Oh, Beswick got in there. This is hilarious. I actually have a very close friend named Mike Beswick. This is Mark Beswick. Uh, I guess his, his long lost uncle or something taking a poo on this toilet. And now the prisoners are starting to get angry. I get it, man. You're dirty, go shower. There's a number of conditions that prisoners can fall into that makes them angry. Um, they can be dirty, they can be, uh, they can need to go to the bathroom, they can be bored, they can be homesick and stuff like that. Uh, or they can just be mentally ill, which happens a lot of the time as well. But anyway, these drains are doing a good job of stopping the water, which is something that normally concerns me. Hey guys, yeah, just have a good time. Go out in the yard, lift some weights, see if I care. James Scales. The full version of the game, I believe, is going to have bios on all of these prisoners. Uh, which they do not have right now. Oh, I should pause it for a second because bureaucracy has unlocked finance. So what we can do is hire an accountant, like so. And if I put the accountant down in here, uh, that will satisfy our last condition, I believe. Good. So that grant is done for us. Um, now we're just going to keep time basically moving super quickly because I want to see how long it takes for these prisoners to get absolutely crazy. Because they are just going to sit around in their cell, basically like doing nothing, just watching TV. I guess it's not that hard to manage uh, eight prisoners, but it gets harder and harder. Because as you can see, every day, uh, eight new prisoners come in. This is the only game mode right now. I'm not sure if the actual release is going to have more game modes. But this is like the, the main game type right now. But yeah, as I was saying, these prisoners are going to have uh, bios in the full version of the game. Actually, one of the pre-purchase options, uh, for a little bit extra on top of the cost of the game, you can actually put your own prisoner in the game like with his own biography that you write like a rap sheet and particulars like his age and stuff like that uh and that is the option that i sprung for so look for ryan letourneau gracing prison architect at some point in the future when he actually gets put in the game uh he, he went down for murder he stabbed his mom 137 times you get it it's kind of like an isaac reference that's what i was getting at there anyway these guys are going to go to the canteen. Our main objective here is to feed all prisoners, and I think we are going to get that done. By the way, if the prisoners are red, that means they're angry. If they're green, I think that means they're happy. Uh, so everything is going quite well here so far. Let us actually, these guys seem content. Let us load into one of our other prisons. So I'll exit here and go to load prison. I have two prisons. One of them is mere, merely existential pain. And this is a, I don't know why that X is there. Uh, but this is a prison that is actually going reasonably well. Uh, as you can see, it's fairly well organized. I've got like a nice cell block here. One requires medical attention. Oh yeah, because we've injured this guy because he freaked out. Apparently his room requires a serving table. He does, he's not supposed to live in a canteen. He's supposed to be in a cell. Uh, let us erase the canteen part here. And we're going to make this a cell. I'm not sure what's up with that. Similarly, we seem to have none listed for a lot of these. And I'm assuming this is just something that happened weirdly so again we're gonna make these all cells uh like i said work in progress so this prison's going reasonably well even though these prisoners are just like non-stop complaining this guy's hungry okay get over it what time is it uh, i guess it is lunchtime. you should be expecting a meal sometime soon this guy's homesick well you know what you should have thought of that richard platter before you stole the twinkie from the 7-eleven that carries a, a pretty heavy uh offense here so, uh, yeah, as you can see, I've got this pretty much set up like the exact same, except I've got more efficient use of space. Got our accountant here, got our warden here, canteen, kitchen, shower, and holding cell. And then a nice cell block, including a, a second cell block down here, so I can hold about 15 prisoners uh, and keep them reasonably happy. The only thing you need for a cell to actually be functional is a bed, a toilet, and a bookshelf. Or, you actually, you don't need a bookshelf, just a bed and a toilet, but I like to throw a bookshelf in here, you know, so they can learn while they're in prison. I should probably get a bigger canteen as well. Uh, and, you know, they, they can learn while they're in prison. Then they don't become lifelong criminals. They become academics or something when they leave. Or, I don't know, internet marketers or something. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, canteen's getting real busy in here. So this is my example of a prison that's going reasonably well. Which means it's kind of actually more boring to show off. Let us instead load into... PureChaos.prison. Which is not going nearly as well. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of flooding here. And the reason for that flooding is because these guys get angry and then they punch the shit out of their toilets, break them, punch the shit out of their beds, break them. Uh, do I not have any guards? What are my guards doing up here? You guys, 
Get down here and stop this riot. We're locking this place down. Uh, yeah, these guys get angry, punch their bed, punch their toilet, flood the whole cell block, incite a riot. It's a goddamn pain in the ass. I believe this is still only like the first or second day of this prison as well. It might even be the first day, to be honest with you. I got this guy trapped in here. This is an earlier prison before I figured some stuff out. Friggin' James Wood over here, famous Hollywood actor, knocked unconscious. Uh, and we're just gonna go beat these guys up, I guess. Yeah, Miller, stop punching your bed, man. Don't call me that. That is really not nice. He's injured the staff. This guy is going in the pokey. Uh, we could make a, like, a solitary confinement unit as well. Anyway, though, um, it's, it's hard to make a, a short-form video of Prison Architect, because where the immersion gameplay really comes from is the, the long-form. So I'm looking to maybe do a series on Prison Architect as uh, development progresses, but for right now, I'm not totally sure. I guess we can end the lockdown. Um, let's talk about the release model for this right now, because this, like I mentioned, is in that kind of Minecraft state where it's in playable alpha, uh, and you can pay for alpha access, and I believe it gives you access to the full game when it comes out. Now, the sticking point, the thing that ma most people have had a problem with this game so far... Uh, is that the minimum price to buy into the alpha is 30 bucks. So for an indie game in 2012, 30 bucks is... I'm not going to say there's no precedent for it, but it's a fairly high price point, I would say. Most people consider games like this to be worth, you know, 10, 15 bucks. So 30 bucks is a high ask. Is it worth $30? I honestly don't know. I, I don't take my hesitation as negativity, because I think this game is a lot of fun. Like I said, I've spent a couple of nights with it already, and I'm having a great time uh, just with the kind of random, crazy prison building like I I like just laying out the prison and trying to get like a good organization for it uh, but I don't know is this gonna be worth $30 for most people in its current state it's hard to say it's one of those things where maybe you know for 30 bucks you want to wait and see if it gets more polished closer to release but if you absolutely have to have early access uh, that is what it is going to run you and to be fair I think it's a reasonable price it's I, I, maybe not a reasonable price I think it's worth it if you like what you see is maybe what I'm trying to get at there. It's my nice way of saying I think they've overpriced this game uh, for not in terms of what it's worth, but in terms of what people are willing to pay for it, if that makes any sense. Uh, I think they'd sell a lot more copies, and this is obviously you know quite obvious, but they'd sell a lot more copies and get a lot more people into this alpha uh, if they had a lower price point. But maybe they don't want a lot of people in the alpha right now. Maybe they just want to show it off to, to some people. Uh, and there are various other kind of like Kickstarter-esque benefits you can get if you actually invest... Uh, more money, like for 50 bucks, you get that prisoner bio that you can put in the game. I think for 100 bucks, you can put your face and the prisoner bio in the game. Uh, for 1,000 bucks, you can help out with development of the game, I believe. But anyway, uh, this has been Prison Architect. It's a nifty game. Uh, I'm liking it so far, and I'm interested to see where development goes with it. But for now, uh, I'm actually digging this prison that we had earlier. Pure chaos is like these guys are just fighting nonstop. Richard Cowell is just destroying, fighting and destroying. John Lindsay is just trying to get some exercise done here. Good on you, John. Try maybe get a job in the prison library instead of messing around with Christopher Eaton, who's unconscious because he injured another prisoner. But in any case, yeah, game is weird and, and cool and uh, super intriguing. Probably a little bit expensive for a lot of people, but uh, it hasn't stopped me. And I'm looking forward to checking this game out as development progresses. So as always, thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in finding out more about this game, I will leave the uh, link to the intro version site in the video description below and as always i will see you guys next time thanks for watching